Joining me now to answer those questions are a number of folks here that we work with day in and day out. We're talking about OES Inland Regional Administrator Eric Lamoureux. We have Fire Chief uh, Kim Zagaris, who is uh, also Rescue and Fire Chief, I think is the official title, and then Mark Payson, who is uh, our uh, Chief uh, from Law Enforcement. So uh, we're going to start with, um, first of all, I do want to thank you guys for being here, taking time out of your, your busy days. You guys, these guys are incredibly busy. So what we want to do, first of all, is talk with Eric. Eric, now you uh, have uh, obviously very dialed in to this WIA system. And I guess my first question to you would be, as a manager, as, a, as an emergency manager, you know, how do you find that WIA uh, is beneficial during or prior to uh, any kind of disaster? Well, you know, we as Sean, it's just the latest addition to our alert and warning toolbox. Uh, just as we've always been able to uh, get notifications of imminent threats out to folks through the EAS system, to their televisions and radios, now we have the ability to add to that the ability to, to get out to folks on their wireless devices. So it's really a key tool. Absolutely. And uh, I would assume the same kind of holds true for you, Chief Zagaris. It does. Uh, we actually will help the fire and rescue and other first responders to be able to get out to notify the public of danger uh, either to them or their property. Could be uh, during fires, hazmat event, could also be during uh, earthquakes, tsunamis, other uh, weather related incidences, or it could be something as a, a, a multi casualty accident out on the highway, or it could be a terrorism event or some other type of disaster. Okay, and uh, Chief Pazin, uh, with you, I would imagine the first thing that comes to your mind would be possibly Amber Alerts. Exactly, Sean. Uh, with WIA, the Wireless Emergency Alert System, it now complements an already in place and successful alert system in the Amber Alert. So many successes with the Amber Alert System, we now can complement this with WIA. And also, I would also like to add with my counterparts that this sponsored governmental agency alert system will enhance the capabilities of not only a person, but a person's family in case of a disaster or some type of emergency that they are involved in or have witnessed. So it's a win-win for everybody. The story that we saw just a, a moment ago actually showed one of those uh, families who benefited uh, from that Amber Alert, went right to that guy's uh, cell phone, alerted him, it caught his attention, and boom, he was able to make the call. He didn't ignore it. He got that call and sent that exactly. call 911. Okay. Uh, Eric, so we've got a number of agencies, many of them, in fact, too many, uh, in California who haven't registered yet for WIA. Why, why is it important for these folks to register for WIA? Well, it, you know, it. it, it it's a tremendous asset for us. You know, we've, we've historically uh, been very successful with the emergency alert system, hitting TVs and radios, but now we can hit those folks that are traveling through our communities. And when we've got a threat, it's important that we can reach as broad an audience as possible. Uh, we want to hit everybody. We don't want to get folks that are just listening on their radio or their television. We want to get folks that have their wireless devices. Recently, I was traveling through the Central Valley on business and got an alert of a, a hazardous dust storm uh, that the National Weather Service uh, believed was going to be uh, blowing through the valley. And, you know, that's really critical, uh, especially if, you know, you're sensitive to those types of conditions or if it's a hazardous condition that we don't want folks driving through. So it's just a great new additional asset mm -hmm. uh, to allow us to, to get the broadest reach possible. And in fact, a lot of those folks who uh, are out there in some of these uh, rural communities are, are in ag. And they may be out working uh, the fields or something, and it would benefit them to know that there was a dust storm on the way. Yeah, the tool, uh, the wireless emergency alert system, allows us to target wireless devices. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is that people don't don't disconnect that we uh, uh, service off their phone. It's a it's a service that's already there. It's mm -hmm. available. It's going to alert your device uh, so long as as you as you keep it active. And it doesn't cost them anything. Nothing it's ever. there. It's already good to go. So, uh, Chief Zagaris, a um, lot of fires uh, so far this season. We've had a little bit of a lull right now, which is nice. Um, any of these uh, fires involve uh, a WIA alert? Has, has it been utilized for any of those fires? Actually, uh, this year we're not aware of any time that has been used for any of the wildland fires that we've experienced. Um, but I see actually for the future it being a very uh, useful tool um, out there. And I think as Eric was just talking about, so many people, you know, in the old days would listen to the radio or, or would wait for, you know, we'd, we'd 
call their, uh, their, their landlines back in, back in the days. So many people are using you know, a, a cell phone today, a smart device. We can actually send it out and be able to get a hold of people. Just in a wildland fire, we never know exactly who's out and what they're doing, whether they're camping, hiking, whatever type of recreational activity they may be doing. You can surely bet they're probably going to carry their, their uh, cellular phone. And if they are, and if we've got connectability, mm -hmm. then we'll be able to reach them and send that message to them of pending threat or danger uh, so they're more aware of what's going on around them. Chief Pays, I'm curious. You were a sheriff back in the day before you came to Cal OES. Was WIA or any form of that used back then when you were there? If not, would it have helped in any situation? You know, as Sheriff of Merced County, uh, with Cal OES, the money that we got from those grants, we were able to put in the reverse 911. Mm. And you got to bear in mind, uh, even though we've been going through a drought here in California, and thank goodness the rains have come, uh, we had a series of floods. We had a series of other fires in the Central Valley area. I cannot emphasize enough to Sean and to you and our viewers just how critically important the technological advancement of both the Amber Alert, WIA, the Reverse 91, all these put together the perfect trifecta to enhance public safety. And that's what we're trying to emphasize here. So with all those little, um, I would submit to you, arrows in our quiver, mm -hmm. we're able to use that. And with the enhancement of WIA, again, it's all about public safety and the usability and the advancement of such. Absolutely. Eric, uh, yeah. Rook, yeah, go ahead. So Sean, um, Chief Pazin talks about the reverse 911. It's a tool that a lot of local governments use to get notifications out to residents that have subscribed to that service. And where we complements that is you now have the ability to hit other folks that are traveling through that community. So the reverse 911 systems are incredibly robust. They get out to the residents that have signed up, but they miss those folks that may be traveling or, or uh, tourists in a particular community. We've got a lot of those locations throughout the state. Now, a moment ago, I may have misspoken to a certain degree. Uh, I said that if, if you don't get uh, a wireless signal, uh, you, don't have, you say you have bad cell coverage, that you may not get that that alert but from what I understand that is possible that to, to get some kind of alert right well there's concerns I think by some folks that the congestion will result in them not getting the alert and that's not the case um, the alerts will continue to go through uh, regardless of any congestion that may be occurring okay uh, does anybody else have anything else that they want to add um, the whole point here is that there are too many agencies that haven't signed up yet it seems like a no-brainer it's just another tool in the toolbox. Well, Sean, the only thing that I, we can collectively emphasize is about public safety. See something, you get the alert. Uh, again, as Eric had mentioned and Chief Segaris had mentioned, uh, between Amber Alert, between Reverse 911, and with the WIA, there's no reason not to be informed. And again, as uh, I mentioned earlier in our conversation, uh, the technological advancements are there and the public needs to use them not only for themselves but their neighbors and their family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we actually need uh, the emergency services community to embrace it and we need the public to embrace it for themselves as individuals, their families and their friends and their loved ones. It really will benefit everybody. I can't imagine in today's day and age when you find out about an event that you don't reach out to you know touch all those folks one way or another. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, again as, as society changes from, you know, how we used to listen to radio and TV and people, you know, are on the internet, listening to the, not listening to the radio, maybe they've got an iPod or some other device, uh, or they don't have landlines, just about everybody you look at anymore has got uh, a smart device, some type of cellular capability. So it, it's really, you know, one of those things we need to embrace uh, as citizens of the state and as a nation. Uh, it, it just makes sense, right? It just makes sense. Why would you not? All right. Thanks, gentlemen, for being here. Really appreciate you taking the time out and getting that message out. It's really important.